Do you ever start a project and then realise that you are wildly out of your depth? That's what I've realised with this project here. So the idea of this project is to turn this into the Devourer from Prayer to the Gods. I really cannot build spikes at all. I've been trying different ways of doing spikes for several hours. I've come back to it after a day or so of looking and I just can't seem to get a natural looking spike. I'm going to put this project on pause for now. I know that like no time has passed at all in terms of videos since the last one, but as you can see, I've erected all of the scaffolding and I've probably spent at least three to four hours just scratching my head over this spike. Just as you can see, I've got bits there. I've kind of been placing blocks, not liking them, removing them, placing them again. I haven't quite been happy with how it's turned out so far. So we're going to pause this for now, but I do have a few planned projects for today. One of which I have already mostly done, which is down here in this hole. So as I said last video, we have a slime chunk. What I've done between videos is I've dug the slime chunk down pretty much to bedrock. Um, I think there's about two or three layers between the magma blocks down there and uh, bedrock. And this is kind of where I'm going to talk quickly. Oh, there we go. There's some slimes going down there. This is where I'm going to quickly talk about kind of the aims of my world. So the aims of this world is kind of twofold. One is to kind of investigate the technical side of Minecraft. So try and build some really technical designs. So this is an example of something where I kind of did the second thing, which is just to build and enjoy. So this is loosely based off Il Mango's slime farm. So if we head on down to the bottom and don't get attacked by any slimes, um, we have many, many le Hi there, slime. We have many, many layers of spawning spots. And the idea is, is all of them should see the golems over there get attracted to them and then get caught on these magma blocks and then the minecarts will pick up the items and spit them off to go on their merry way. I just kind of zoned out when I was building this. So all of these iron golems, some of them do attract the slimes, but some of them don't, which is why I haven't placed them in on the other side. To be honest, this produces a fair amount just of one side of the golems in place and the other side just grabbing a few of the slimes that spawn over in the far side where they're not aggravated by these golems. I've decided to add a little slime face uh, which is on every single floor all the way up and we have some minecart unloaders here. These are very generic minecart loaders um, so when the minecarts come on over if they have an item they will turn on this comparator which then turns the torch off and makes the minecart pause on whichever hopper until the minecart is unloaded. Then they get spat out here and here and I had to do a little bit of funkiness with the water stream so one dropper is there, one dropper is there but I wanted to join the streams and send them up an item elevator. So this kind of kinks off to the left and then there's a bit of an ice stream runoff they both fit together. As you can see, I am really close to bedrock. Um, I actually had to move up all of this redstone by one in order for it to fit. And that's pretty much the slime farm for now. So the idea is, is this isn't going to be the most efficient slime farm in the world. But it, as it's very close to my base, it's going to be loaded pretty much all the time. I also had to move this beacon over uh, because it was actually in the way of the item unloaders. So I actually have two holes now in order to get to the overworld, which is, well, not the overworld, sorry, the actual normal lands of Minecraft. And speaking of which, let's head on out up to the top where I have another little project to show, which is over here, over the bamboo. <laughs> so this was something I was meaning to say last episode but I never got around to mentioning it. I have an idea for pretty much all the azalea trees in the world. We're going to showcase the structure that they generate. So if you don't know, azalea trees will generate rooted dirt 
all the way down to a lush cave. So my idea is for all the azalea trees in the world, we're going to make a 13 by 13 circle around each of them, just to kind of give a way of looking down into the cave that lies below. It's kind of an idea that doesn't 100% work because the trouble is you only generally tend to see a tiny little bit. At some point, I want to think of a way to decorate the outside of these circles. So then they're kind of like both a feature of the natural landscape, but also it's not just stone and dirt. That's kind of the idea of this. And this brings me on to the azalea tree that we have going on over here, which actually leads down to our cave base. This one also does, but this one is a little bit more central. So let's head on down here. This was also something, I don't know whether I mentioned it last time, uh, but these are both decorated with basalt on this side and shroom lights. And I did a funky little bit with um, the raw iron and some shroom lights and some stone brick stairs on this one. If I go like this, yeah, we can kind of see the pattern if I stay like this. So that carries on all the way up to the top. And at some point, I really want to make a never tree farm because these shroom lights are an absolute pain in order to gather. And I actually quite like them. This is an issue with the current cave is uh, there are slimes that spawn in here, um, which is going to be a perpetual nuisance. I have no such desire to like find out exactly where the slime chunks are and spawn proof that particular chunk. They're just going to spawn for now and again. But that's that's a price worth living with for this cave. So let's head on over to where the bottom of the azalea um, tree comes out to, which is just over here. And as you can see, it carries on a little bit more because this actually isn't the lush cave that this one connects to. It actually connects to a lush cave down there, which kind of bugged out and didn't really generate a lush cave. Um, so all this lush cave you see over here, I think is connected to that azalea tree. I'm not 100% certain exactly how the um, the spawning algorithm works, but I'm pretty certain that this carries on down to that one. It was just the cave generation here that chopped off some of the rooted dirt, which is a little bit funky. This is where the slime balls come over to. But I kind of stopped myself when I was like considering how to decorate this because we've all seen a chest wall. So I was watching uh, a few hermits and I was watching Mumbo. It's not, uh, he's not a chap I tend to watch all of his episodes, but I saw he posted after taking his break. So I decided to give him a little So I decided to give him a bit of a watch. And in his episode, he came up with a lazy river where all of the items in his mining trip would go on a journey down a river into his storage. And that's something I'm going to try and repeat. Only I've already made it, which is, you know, half of the battle. And also mine is less of a lazy river and more of an excitable river. And this is still a little bit of a work in process. So if we just add some rockets in there just to act as our dummy items, they get flung out of there they come coming down here, and this is a bit I actually really like. A little bit of a bounce down this um, this little rockfall here. And then they come under this bridge. This was a bit of a pain because of how water is redirected. So it kind of bounces there, then shimmies along. And then eventually it will come down. And I've got some hoppers under these slabs, which will collect up all the items. And it's not just the slime balls I want to connect to this. I want this to be kind of a feature of the entire area. So take this chicken farm. We can connect up the chicken output. So all the cooked chicken and all the feathers will get spat out and carry on down the river. Um, I'm thinking of connecting the sticks from the log farm. And perhaps if the storage ever gets filled up, any spare logs will come down here as well. Like, the world is the oyster when it comes to this river of what exactly can go through it. Um, there is one problem with the current mod pack I run is there is a bit of a issue with sodium and running water. 
Um, so if I run Optifine, it fixes it, but Optifine doesn't really work with the rest of the mod pack, which is a bit of a shame. As you can see from this river, it is a little bit strange in places. And that kind of brings me on to what I was saying about having half of what I do sort of just kind of be a relaxation. Is this cave, I'm not going to record any projects in here unless it's a specific project. So I'll be coming back here and I'll just be doing a little bit of terraforming here and there, just kind of. You know, if I'm watching a film and I just fancy doing a spot of terraforming, I'll do it then. Um, so over time, I'm just going to come into this cave and we'll just kind of... I'm not going to maybe bring it up unless I've done something huge to it. And we'll just slowly, over the course of many videos, just kind of see a transformation of this cave. But that's enough about the stuff in here. Because there is one more thing I would like to do today, and that is wool um, because in the nether I get lost a lot and having carpets on the floor of the nether roof is a really easy way of navigating I've seen Exuma do it and I'm sure other people have done it so you kind of you mark out paths along the nether roof and the advantage is, is nothing can spawn there and you don't have to worry about spawn proofing if you use carpets so I've already built up half of it so we have bar upside down barrels along the front uh, the sheep will live in all of these torched off chambers um, when the sheep nibble the grass there is an observer uh, if we just knock out these two blocks here there is an observer detecting this uh, and then a chain going up into that block up there uh, that will hit the note block updating the dispenser I'll add some shears to these dispensers and there is a hopper minecart within this grass block, a hopper chain leading to these barrels. As you can see, I've kind of put the project materials in here already. And we get to have a lovely selection of wool at our pleasure. And wherever this diorite is, this diorite is temporary. The idea is, is we're going to have wool blocks on all of these. And also, once... All of this hopper storage has filled up. I'm going to run a comparator off here, which will have two purposes. One is, is it will retract this observer here. So once it's filled up, there won't be any wasted shears because the storage is filled up. And also, it will push this wall block up. So when I come in, I can easily see that perhaps the white wall has been filled up. So it might be worth coming in, bringing in a shulker box and emptying it out. And I'm not going to go crazy with the storage for this area. Unless something changes in the future, I don't really see myself using too much wool. And I've noticed I've managed to build this in a slime chunk, which is very clever of me. Uh, the reason why this room is so huge, I was thinking of doing a time lapse for it, but I kind of looked at the footage of the time lapse and decided I'd didn't fancy trying to um, do it because it was actually quite a small dig in the grand scheme of things. And also, when I was reviewing it and started to plan out where I was going to put everything, this room was a little bit too big. I'm going to get all of the blocks out of the storage and I'm going to build the second half of this wool farm. So I'll be back in a little jiffy. And that is the sheep farm all constructed. So I have gone ahead and done a few extra things. I kind of realized midway through building that I actually needed hoppers pointing into those dispensers. So I've done that. And on top of all of the sheep, we have a barrel to put all of our shears in. So before we begin to put the shears in, we need to dye them. Fortunately, I had <laughs> all the dyes ready to go. I did have to um, 
Ooh, there is thunder in the background. That is very exciting. Fortunately, I did have all of the ingredients to make the dye in various places of my base, which made it a lot easier. And I found a post on a forum. Man, that thunder is really loud. For a good color wheel. So let's give it a try and see how it looks. So that one's light gray already. That one's gray. That one's black. Brown. Red. Orange. Yellow. And then I need to switch this over. And then come back in reverse order. And I need to knock that back this wall by a little bit. Because at the moment it's a little bit of a squeeze on this side. Uh, unfortunately the mine shafts don't quite quite line up. But that's fine, I can just move the mine shafts over a couple of blocks. Man, that thunder is really loud. Okay, I've turned down the thunder, so the thunder shouldn't be so loud. So let's have a look at how it all looks. Looks pretty good on this side. Let's have a look over on this side. Yeah, that's a pretty nice colour wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some shears and make sure that all of these are working. I have been watching these sheep a little while. There we go. There's some... Um, oh, actually, two went at the same time. It does seem that all of the sheep modules are working well, and the wool is beginning to pour in. So that's going to kind of do it for today. Um, I was planning on decorating as well, but I kind of have already done the first half of the video, and I realized that I talked for a very long while. And I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter for the future. So that's going to do it for today. Between episodes, I am going to decorate in here. Wow, this thing is actually really fast. Um, and I also want to add in the redstone to shut off these devices. Hey there, slime. Shut off these devices if the storage fills up. I'm going to do that between videos. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Have a lovely morning, evening, or afternoon.